How's everyone doing today? Very good. We're ready for some good learning. Thank you everyone for getting logged in. I'm going to leave everyone unmuted, obviously, when we get started so we can interact. We'll talk a little more about that, but uh, it's great to see everyone. We're still getting some people logged in here, so we will get started in a few minutes. But it's uh, great to see some new faces here and to see some uh, and to see some friendly faces as well. Hopefully everyone's friendly, right? <laughs> one, the one thing I miss, I'm sure you all do with uh, obviously social distancing is the great thing about our, our workshops we do is we'll kick them off even a little earlier than, than this so we can get everyone networking and getting to know each other. So, um, and just part of being that part of the Action Coach community is you get to do some networking and really uh, just be other like-minded business owners like yourself. You just got amazing people here. All right, got a few more people logging in. We've got a full crowd tonight, as they say. Get going here. All right. If you guys want to have your cameras on, that'd be great if you're in a position to do that because we will be interacting, we'll be seeing each other, looking at each other, talking, and we'll talk about how you're going to ask questions and participate. Hope you didn't think you'd sit here on an afternoon and just be able to listen. That would be boring, wouldn't it? Yeah, no, good stuff. I didn't know what kind of uh, uh, meeting this would be. I'm glad it's participative. Make sure technology is working. Who am I going to pick on? Hey, Sherry, unmute yourself and talk. I want to make sure you guys can do that. Is that it? That's all I have to do? Yay. Say that again. I said, is that really all I have to do? Turn That's it. it. There we go. Turn, you know what the problem was? Turn it on and talk. <laughs> the problem was with the technology is I realized I had to turn my own speakers on. <laughs> There you go. There I thought you I go. saw some mouths moving a minute ago, and I'm like, wait, did I, did I mute everyone? I try not to do that. All right, well, cool. Well, hey, let's kick it off here. Thank you, everyone, for coming, and, and it's great to have you here. Uh, you'll see me every now and then for the first five minutes, because we know some people log in late. You'll see me looking over in the corner, and that's to let people in, and then uh, a few minutes in, we'll, we'll lock the room, uh, which means you can't leave either, okay? <laughs> So who here would like more referrals in their business? Anyone? Anyone? Oh, let's do Sound it. Sound good? Awesome, yeah. Well, we're gonna learn today, um, obviously 21 ways to build a referral-based business. And we're gonna dive into that and really, I, you know, I do a workshop sometimes, and some of you here have been to it, double your customers. And we talk about referrals and what that means. So, uh, and how you can double your customers just through your current client base. So we're going to dive into that and a lot of great things today. Um, why is my technology not working? All right. So the big question, the vital question to get started here today, guys. Is it okay if I'm your coach today for a little bit? Everyone good with that? Yes. Awesome. Absolutely. I, I appreciate that. I Most importantly, it, it means the world to me because I know how busy you guys are. We got a lot of business owners and, and sales, top salespeople here and I know it's hard for us to find time to invest in ourselves. So I appreciate the opportunity and, and, and the honor to do that. So thank you very much. So I want to congratulate you guys, though, for investing in you. Because we know in business, your time is your most valuable asset, right? We can find, you know, we can always find more money. But we really can't find more time, can we? And it's important that how we invest our time is, is, is the key to our growth. You know, so it's about working on our business and not in our business. We hear that a lot, right? And it's not just a buzz catchphrase. It, it, it's the honesty. And this is working on your business. So we're going to make sure we make the most out of your time. Because in business, we know it's your most valuable asset. And... You know, we look at businesses around here 
in business owners, is it fair to say that sometimes business means busyness for us? I think we can kind of say that. We sit there and we do too many emails, right? And we, we got, I just got to do this. The next thing you know, the day goes by. So again, congratulations on investing in your most valuable asset, which is your time and yourself. And how you invest your time is one of the keys to your business success. And we're going to make sure we value that and give you some amazing content. And I promise you, at the end of today, you will have actionable strategies that you can go implement in your own business. And there's also going to be an offer at the end of today of how we can help you implement those strategies. Some of that's complimentary, and we'll look at some coaching, coaching stuff as well. Because we want to make sure you put into action what you learned today. Sound good? Yes, sir. Awesome. Great. Because the problems we're solving today is simple. We look at the business life cycle. I'm not going to, this is not the, the, the workshop to dive into that. And all of you are in different phases, right? Phase one, phase two, et cetera. But the problems we're solving is approximately 80% of businesses fail in the first five years. So any of you who have been in business, your own business for five, over five years, I want to congratulate you. For those of you who are less than five years, I wanna make sure that you're not part of the 80%. And more importantly, I don't want any of you to be part of that 90% that fail in the, in the first 10 years. And here's the other thing, when you look at the life cycle, phase five is about exit strategy. 70 to 75% of businesses fail to sell when they're listed with a business broker. And many of them close, close down. So we've got the chat up. The chat goes directly to me. So throughout the whole thing, you can just chat anytime you want, however you want. I want to, I just want you all to type in the chat box. It's a simple yes or no. Have you thought about your own exit strategy? I want to take a second and probably 10 seconds and see what we have. Who here has truly thought about their own exit strategy? Just a quick yes or no. Hey, Scott. Yes. Hey, it's Brian. I thought I would mention uh, Edward Jones has stripped out the chat function from our uh, Edward Jones platform. So I won't be able to participate in that portion of the meeting. <laughs> sure. That's a like, that, that's an easy way to say I can't participate. No, all good. I appreciate that, Brian. Um, obviously, I want everyone, as you can see, the mute, the mute, the mute is not on. I have not muted everyone. Please, unless you're talking, mute yourself so we don't get any background noise but we're gonna interact because um, you guys don't wanna listen to me for the next 90 minutes straight, do you? I know I don't wanna listen to myself. So, uh, and we've got amazing collection of business owners here. I wanna make sure we get to tap into that. So I like that, looking at, the, uh, looking at what we got here, I'd say we have about 65% have absolutely, have said yes, that they've thought about their exit strategy. So I wanna congratulate the group on that because a lot of times it's, it's the opposite. So that's awesome. So a little bit about Action Coach. I think it's important you know who we are and obviously who I am. We are the world's number one coaching firm. Uh, we have over a thousand coaching offices. I'm a franchise owner of Action Coach and over seven, actually I need to update that. It's almost 84 countries now. This is an old slide, I guess. We're about world abundance through business re-education. So what does that mean? First part is world abundance. And world abundance means, listen, we're, we're, most of us here are in all, the Austin, greater Austin area. There's about 2.4 million biz, people in Austin. There's over 56,000 small businesses. Do you think there's more than enough opportunity? And I know we have a couple coaches on here too, which I love, because there's more than enough opportunity for us to go help the world, right? And some people are going to like me more than they might like someone else and vice versa. I know we've got a couple of realtors on here as well and marketing people, you name it. There's more than enough abundance to go around that we can all help make this a better place. The business re-education part, that's the interesting one. Who here by a show of hands was taught how to be a business owner? Anyone? Or were we taught to have a job, right? We got some smiles and chuckles. What happens when we grow up? Hey, you got to get good grades so you can get into a trade school so you can get a good job or you can get into a university so you can get a good job. And then you get that job. And then we get into, you know, we, obviously I coach a lot of business owners. That's what I do every day. And what happens? I've got to work 60 hours. Why? Because that's how I was taught. Well, screw that. Action Coach, our definition of a business is a commercial profitable enterprise that works. We all want that, right? 
How about one, the, the rest of our de definition, that works without you. Think about that. An enterprise that works without you. And that's what we coach at Action Coach. That's the exit strategy. There's the first exit strategy. How does the business work without you? The second exit strategy is how do you actually sell your business? So that's a big part of re-education. We're going to talk about some things today of um, that you might have been taught the other way. Maybe you were taught marketing was an expense when we know actually marketing should be an investment. And I know you have a couple of marketing people that are like, yeah, that's right. So obviously we're talking to our CPA, marketing absolutely is an expense. We want the IRS to take that tax deduction too. But we're gonna talk about re-education. That's a big part of what we do at Action Coach. We've got some more people logging in, that's awesome. We're in over 15,000 over 15, businesses each week across the world as we talked about, and you know all that. How about a little bit about who your coach is so you know who I am. These two fun guys, yeah. This picture was taken a while ago. This is my why, what I do, why I get out there. I wanna provide for them. I wanna show them how we can make the world a better place. Uh, and they grow up for all those who have kids, right? They grow up. The, my oldest, Jesse, in the red shirt on the left, he's the tall one there. He's eight years older than his younger brother, Josh. Um, hey Scott, I'm sorry to interrupt. We're not seeing the picture. Um, what about now? Are you see, no? Nope. nope. Nothing? Nope. We see you and raving fan. Wow, okay, thank you for that. Let's take a look here at what is going on. One second, thank you Sherry for that. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm sharing my screen. Let's stop that for a second maybe. Let's try again. Were you seeing it before and it went away? No, there was no, nothing shown before. We got it now. You got it now? Yep. Awesome. That's interesting. Thank you. I, and this is why we leave you unmuted so you can speak up. Thank you, Sherry. You're awesome. Sure. All right. So back to my amazing kids. You can see how fun they are. That's them. And the oldest, the youngest one caught up to the oldest. He's the six foot five guy on, 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 in the, all dressed in black. And the, the oldest still says he can kick his butt though. Um, a little bit about my background and why I got into coaching. After three decades of building businesses of all sizes, I wanted to show my kids how we can go from supporting our family to making the world a better place. And that three decades have given me the background to help businesses build systems and develop and implement processes that needed. I'm very passionate about not just success in business, but success in life, that work-life balance. And over my three decades, I've helped generate over $6 billion in lifetime revenue for the companies I've worked for. And I'm here as Action Coach, not because I want to generate another billion for, for me. I want to generate another billion for all the small business owners that I am blessed to, to work with every day. Uh, we do a lot of these workshops, which are complimentary, as well as the coaching we do. So who here would like to help get a part of that billion, that next billion? We got a few people who want a piece of that? That's awesome. Good. Good. So... Let's, um, where's my chat function, which just went on me? There we go. Let me get the chat box, make sure I got that up too. All right. All right. Technology, we got to love it. So let's learn a little bit about learning, right? Because learning is a mindset. So who here is ready to take notes? Show me. You got your pen, right? You got your, your markers. If you notice, Mine are colorful. A lot of people laugh at me. How do you go run a business with a pen you used in first grade? Very simply, our minds work in color. They're, we're very visual. And you will see, people who know me have seen my notebooks, my notes are in variable col colors along with different highlighters because when I go back, it's easy to trigger in my mind what I'm learning. It's easy to trigger in my mind, oh, that's what it was, so that I can take actually shorter notes. So make sure next time, if you don't have that now, get some colored pens when you're taking notes. It'll help you. I do it even in my business meetings. Again, you're already starting to participate. I appreciate that. We're going to keep asking you some questions. We're going to be interactive. Make sure your phones are off and flipped over. Turn off your email. Who has their email on? The, the fun, interesting thing in this new Zoom world we're all living in, 
is that now instead of coming to the workshop, usually we do this over lunch at the UT club, we feed you a nice three course chicken dinner or lunch, excuse me. And, and if we do a later event, maybe we can even have a couple of cocktails at the end. In the Zoom world though, we're still logged in to the world. So again, I wanna congratulate you for taking time in your busy schedule to be here and to invest in yourself. So make sure you're doing so by turning off all the distractions, all right? The only failure is the failure to participate. So how do we give 100% every day? So you being here is part of giving 100%. But in your business, how are you giving 100%? Right? right, I want you to think about that. Do you have a team member that you see is struggling, but you say, I'm too busy, I'll go talk to them later? That's failure of giving 100%. Someone the other day gave a great example of that. Imagine you walk up to the soda machine, you put it in, a, 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 it's a dollar for a Diet Coke, and you put in 80, 80 cents. If you press the button, are you going to get the Diet Coke? No. Life is the same. We need to put in the full dollar. We need to participate 100% so we can get 100% and more back. Now, to get the most out of your time today, I want you to be open to some new things here. Who here has some kids or had kids and they raised them? And how often do they say, I know? I know, Dad. I know, Mom. And when we do that, what are we doing? Literally putting up a wall. I promise you this today. You're going to hear some things you've heard before. And you're going to think, I know. But I'm going to ask you to put that aside and not say, I know. Instead, how about saying, isn't that interesting? Because when you say that, you're not putting up that wall. Because maybe you're going to hear something you've heard before, but we can teach it and we can interact with our great brain trust we have here in this group in a way that it works for everyone, right? So let's make sure we're saying, not saying, I know, instead we are saying, isn't that interesting? And along the way, and by the way, that's not me dancing there, I promise. I don't look that good. Let's have some fun. we got to have fun in life. And when we have fun, we're more relaxed and we're going to have some BFOs. BFOs are what we call an action coach. Blind flashes of the obvious. So let's have some fun and let's learn along the way. Sound good? Everyone in agreement with that? Awesome. All right. So to get more referrals... You must be willing to learn, to think out of the box, and that's some things we're gonna talk about. I wanna share with you a very interesting story. I worked for a very large financial company many years ago across my 30-year career. Uh, financial services, think investment, investment management for retail. And they did a survey. They have hundreds of thousands of clients across the globe, and they did a survey. And they, type, they, they asked how many of you would be willing to give your advisor a referral? Someone shout out a couple answers. What do you think the answer was? And if you've been to one of my, if you've heard this from me before, then don't say anything. But I know there's a lot of new faces here. What do you think that number is? How many clients are willing to give a referral? 100%. Go, go ahead, I just, I'll shout it out. So I think, Chris, were you saying something? 100%. Like 100? Okay. Anyone yeah. else? John, you unmuted yourself. Yeah, I've heard numbers like 80 to 90%. Yeah. Their survey came back at 85%. No surprise, right? It's the second question that blew my socks off, as they say. How many of your advisors asked for a reference? Anyone want to throw out a ridiculous number there? Or type it in the box. There we go. Yep, 112%. Is that crazy? So I want you to type into the chat box, how many here are consistently asking for referrals from your own clients every day? And be honest, yes or no? Type in a Y or an N, a yes or a no? Yep, we got a mix. We're about 50-50. I like that, yes, but not effectively. I appreciate the honesty there, right? We're mixed. So let's go back to this large financial firm. Let's assume they only had 100,000 advisors. 
And each advisor typically had about 30 clients. 85% were willing to say yes. When a, a client's willing to refer to you, do they give you one or do they give you multiple referrals? Multiple. But only 12% were asking, do we need to do the astronomical numbers of missed opportunity in business that tap, was happening there? So how's that in your business? What's the missed opportunity that you have there? So when we now go back and say again, you can double your business from your current customer base with the proper referral system, do you think we could triple it? Quadruple? That sounds pretty easy to do, doesn't it? And that's what it's about, right? But why don't people ask? Why don't you ask? And the simple reason that I've found is there's a huge amount of fear around asking for a referral. Oh, I don't want to be too salesy. Oh, I'm not sure. Sometimes it's, I'm not sure if they like me. <laughs> it's good to do surveys, by the way, to find out if your clients like you. And I'm sure, if, and I know a good chunk of you guys here, they do like you. And of course, they'll give you a referral. So we're going to talk about how to ask for that referral and what are the things we need to do so that we double and triple our business. That's not me just blowing smoke up your butt, as they say. When we say that's what we can do, this can happen. Do we have the right system in place? So to build a referral-based business, why do we want to do it? Well, it's easier to reach people, right? You start at a high level of trust because they're already your client, by the way. By the way, let me flip it on you. Who here brings their, their I bring these shirts to the dry cleaner. It's a small business typically. Usually mom and pop are there. I'm their client. Do you think they have to listen to me when I walk in? Of course they do. Just like if they walk into my place. Do you think I should be asking them for a referral? Telling them about my business? How many of you do that when you go about and run your daily errands and let your your vendors of your life know what you do so that they can refer business to you. Actually, now that's 22 steps. I forgot that one. We didn't put that in there, right? The sales cycle is shorter. That's a bonus. We're already giving you a bonus. See, you're getting rewarded for your time. The average sale is higher, by the way, because there's a trust level. They're more likely to follow your recommendations. I know I've got some marketing people on here. If they one of them wants to unmute themselves, how many people check a Google review before they'll do business with someone? I see Jennifer, you unmuted yourself. What's the number? I know you know this one. At least 84%. That's the same thing as a referral. If I refer someone to Jennifer, you think she's gonna, she's, she's probably gonna do a quick Google check as well. So it's important that we have that. And that's obviously we could spend hours on that conversation too. We got a greater chance of getting more referrals when we ask for referrals. And they're higher quality value clients, right? Think about that. We're actually going to get the client we want. We're going to talk about that. So what's the difference between a lead and a referral? Is it fair to say everyone understands we got to dump leads into our sales funnel? That's the marketing piece. Referral is the marketing piece of your sales and marketing. It's actually marketing and sales. Anyone want to say the difference, tell me the difference between a lead and a referral, their thoughts, or even type it in. I'll, 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 uh, I'll read it out. What's a lead? Is it warm or cold usually? Well, the lead is cold. Yeah, it's usually a lot colder. Yeah, the referral is from warm to becoming a client. That's right. Also, someone just wrote in, a referral is recommended. A lead is not always recommended. Absolutely. So what's the likelihood that we're going to close that business and win that business if it's a referral? A lot higher, right? So, number one, we want leads, we want, we want referrals, excuse me. Well, step one, that's what that number one says. Who's your ideal customer? When you decide who you want to do business with, they'll all start showing up. I do believe this. I'm about the energies around us. And if we know what we want, we will attract that. And if you don't believe that, that's okay too. But how do you know how to ask for a referral if you don't know who your ideal customer is? 
the new buzzword in the marketing world is who's your app who's your avatar right so who here you just do a show of hands and, and nods ahead who here can say they truly have a defined avatar i.e know who their ideal customer is in their business who, who, who here is confident in saying, you know, Scott, I could, if, I, if you took me off mute right now, I could tell you who my, custom, my ideal customer is. We're not even at 50% on that, right? We got a few hands up. That's awesome. But we're below 50%. If you don't know who you want, how can I refer them to you? I had a uh, networking Zoom call earlier today. I had a couple today actually, and, and I asked, who's your ideal client? Who can I refer to you? I wanna know, because we probably, our client base overlaps. Think about it, and I look at, we've got about 20 people on here today. A couple of them are my clients, and a couple of them, I'm their clients. There's an overlap, right? How many people do you think on this workshop today could become your client, they themselves? I know my marketing people are saying, everyone, if they're in business, they can be my client, right? That's the fun answer, but then I also know some of the marketing people on here, they have a defined avatar. They actually don't want all of you as your, their client, and that's okay. And some of you probably don't want me as your client, depending what your business is. You need to know who your client is or who you, excuse me, who your ideal client is. Otherwise, how does anyone, yourself included, know who you want to refer to you? Who here likes firing clients, anyone? It's mixed, right, depends. The less we have to fire a client means the less time we're spending, we're gonna talk about the ideal client, we'll get more into that, obviously. When we have our ideal clients, we're not wasting time with people who maybe are, are taking up a lot of our time in our business, a lot of our team's time. So if there's only one thing you walk away from today and you just do that, it's step one. Write down in full detail who your ideal client is. Right? I want you to think about that. Write that down as a note right now. And if you do have it, I want you afterwards, still write yourself a note to look at it and make sure that's who it is. And if you only do that, I promise you your business will grow after this workshop if that's the only thing you do today. All right, so know who you want, know who they are. All right, what do they look like? Make a list of the qualities, who you want. Do they pay their bills on time? Are they pleasant to deal with? What else? Type into the chat real fast, what's one characteristic of your ideal client? And it should be different for everyone. And while you're thinking, I'll tell you a couple of mine. Are they coachable? right? I like small business. Yep, that's mine. But I have a definition of a small business. What is your definition? Is it zero employees? Five, excuse me, team members. We need to say team members, not employees. Is it zero revenue to 200,000? Is it a million to 20 million? Right? So you got to get it to that next level of detail. So what's our second one here? We want to go through your current customer list with your ideal customer criteria. Because part of that is you need to train every customer how to be an A-class customer. When you think of your client base, what is an A-class customer? They're awesome. What is awesome? What's the definition of awesome? B, right? We rate them. They're basic. They're good. They're above that line. You see there's a line. How many can say 80% of their customer and client base is above this line, their A or B? By a show of hands, do you feel 80% of your customer and client base is above that line? We've got some, uh, I'm not sure, head nods. Something you need to think about. How do we, and we do this in coaching, how do we make sure we have the ideals? So when we coach you, we're going to make sure we know what the definition of an A and B client are, and do we have them? And we're going to look at the client base. Do we need to make some changes? Right? C, can't deal with. So now when you look at C's, 
can we move them to a B or do we need to move them out of our business? And I know, especially in times if maybe your business is struggling, you're like, I need the money. Or if you know what the law of the vacuum is, and if not, email me later and we, we can talk about that at another a separate one-on-one. -on -one. It's about leaving, opening up space so the right, the right business comes in. And again, that goes back to step one. What is the right business? Who's your ideal customer? These are things you need to do as you're building a referral system. You have to define these things. And I know that that's probably some stuff you don't hear so much. But if you don't know who they are, how can you ask someone to refer the right client to you? And then we have our Ds dead. We just need to stop, right? Get rid of them. It's the old 80-20 rule. 80% of our business comes from 20% of our customer base. Those are the A's and B's. And can we lift C's up? So step three, how work out how much each and every one of your current customers has cost you to get. Who here can you shout out what it costs on average to, to acquire a new customer or client for their business? If anyone's willing to, if not, type it in. Anyone want to shout out what their cost is to enroll a new client or, or get a new customer in? One person, zero. Okay, great. Have to see what your business is. That's awesome. I know for my business, it averages about $750 to $1,000. The thing you got to think about though, you might need to bring a customer back two or three times before you make a profit on them. All right? So you need to know if you've been to, you've heard some other people, myself included, and we say this in coaching all the time when we're coaching you. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. So when we coach in the beginning, one of the first things we do besides knowing all your numbers is knowing what's it cost to acquire a customer. Because if we can build the proper referral system, we're going to reduce that cost. But there's going to be some cost. We'll talk about some ways we spend a little money on our referral system. So let's talk about how you calculate acquisition costs and lifetime value. Anyone want to give a shout out on what lifetime value of a customer means? Sometimes we look at it cost me $100 to bring on this customer who just spent $500. So my, I make $400. But if they keep coming back and they every year spend $500 and they stay for five years, what's the lifetime value? It's more than $500, right? That lifetime value now is $500 times five, that's $2,500. It cost me $100 to earn $2,500. Who would make that, that, that investment every day? Right? Got to know our acquisition costs. So we need to decide how much are you willing to invest to buy your customers? To buy new customers, excuse me. Right? How much is your customer worth? That, again, goes into the lifetime value. How much are you willing? Or can we do more? Because the more customers we buy, the more referrals we get. So let's look at an example. If you invest $300, there's some simple math here. Marketing, right? You got 10 customers, it costs us $30 each. Simple math. How can we reduce that? Isn't that what a referral process and system is about? What if your client spent $550 a year for six years? That's $3,300 to you. How do you increase that? If you're getting them to be happy, you can see behind me it says raving fans, right? Up the, up the ladder of loyalty. They're gonna keep coming back. We're gonna talk about how do we increase how much they spend by getting them to refer more clients because we give them discounts. Not something you hear often from me about discounts, but we will talk a little bit about that, right? Okay. So step five. Be sure to keep in touch with your customers at least three times a month. Who here can say, and you can type it in a quick yes or no. I told you we'd be a little interactive. You just didn't know it was all typing. <laughs> and you can shout it out if you want to. 
Do you at least three, every three months reach out to your customers? Are you keeping building the relationship you need to communicate? Are you doing that? We got some yeses, we got not consistently, yes, yes, great. So what we do in coaching though is making sure we have the right messaging there. What is our messaging? If we're just saying, hey Sherry, it's good to see you. We're just thinking about you. Hope you're doing well, call us if you need anything. How often is Sherry gonna read that email? But if we're giving good knowledge, maybe it's some knowledge about our industry and what we do for Sherry, right? I know, Brian, you send out, you probably have a newsletter that you send out to your clients on a regular basis, right? That gives information. At the end of that newsletter, are you asking for a referral? Right? Ask for the referral. Goes back to the beginning. Are we asking? We need to ask, because if we ask once, the first time, do you think they're going to give us a referral, most of them? No. We got to keep asking. So how we communicate on a regular basis with our customers and our past customers, not just the ones who are active now. One of my clients today um, in, the, in the accounting field, we talked about how many customers didn't come back this tax season versus the last. And they've been around for about 20 years. So guess what we're creating that we're going to do in September as we get close to tax season again, assuming tax season is April 15th again, which we all hope for. She does. We're going to start reaching out. We're going to have a campaign to those customers who left us. Because we, we don't keep 100% of our customers. That's normal. But we can bring them back. Maybe we can bring them back by saying, by the way, if you refer someone to us, we give you a $25 gift card. Right? How are you reaching out to your customers in a useful way that doesn't waste their time? You need to keep communicating. And in that communication, always asking for referrals. Keep beating that drum because eventually they're going to think of someone who needs a CPA, a coach, a marketing person, a financial advisor. Their AC breaks down. They need someone for an H HVAC, right? They need a payroll person. Got to keep communicating. Got to stay in front of them. Okay. Let's get proactive, not reactive in what we do, right? If they don't remember you, how can they give you a referral? And that's what communication is all about. Does that make sense? Right? They need to know you're there. The key to communication is, again, I can't say this strongly enough, when they finally have a referral, they're going to think, oh, do I, know a, do I know a financial advisor? Even though you might be their financial advisor, maybe they don't talk to you that much, or, or you're their CPA, you're their HVAC person, the plumber, the landscaper. If you're front in my, a mind through communication, and your social media where maybe hopefully they've liked your page, make sure they do. Then when they remember, someone asks, what do they do? And when they ask, someone asks what, on the, on the uh, ladder there, they become an advocate. There's someone who will refer when asked, but we want them to become a raving fan, right? How do we make them, anyone know the definition of raving fan? And if you heard me, you're more than welcome to shout it out. What's a raving fan? Who wants to shout out a definition of raving fan for your business? Come on. Someone who will actively refer you regardless of waiting for someone else to ask for your service or need, where they're so excited about what you're doing, they can't wait to tell everyone to call Jennifer. That's right. That's a raving fan. Thank you, Jennifer. All right, someone says, oh my God, Destin, you, you've got, to, you have an air conditioning unit, you got to call my HVAC guy, Brandon is the best, you, you should just have him come over and check your unit out, just when's last, you, you, here's his card, call him, right, that's a raving fan, through referrals, we can create raving fans, right, so step six, we need to teach your customers why it's good for them to give you a referral, that's the next step, they like you, we know they like you, we've talked about that, they know who you are, we're, we're, we know who our ideal customer is, which is hopefully them, right? So we need to educate them on 
about giving referrals. So it's easy and simple, and ultimately it's very profitable for you. And in some instances, it can be profitable for them. All right, we're, we're gonna go through an example later of how we can make it profitable for them as well. All right, so educate your customers about referring people to you. All right, you need to do that. Who here thinks they, who here believes you, you know, educate your customers pretty well so that it's easy to give a referral? Think about that. So a second note, if you haven't, if you have only taken one, which the first one was make sure you know who your ideal customer is. Why don't you write the second thing down? Obviously all 21 steps are important, but at the top of the list next is how are you educating your customers to give you referrals and making it easy, right? My clients know, and I, we do it through coaching and my clients know, cause obviously I practice what I preach. I will ask them for referrals on a regular basis. I have it in my system. We customize the program for you so we can help you get to where you want to, but there's still a couple of things in my system on a regular basis. I'm gonna ask you, is there anyone else we can help? If you're happy with coaching and they, at the end of every session, I ask them to rate me one out of 10. 10 being, oh my God, this was the best thing since sliced bread. So I know if they like me. I ask for referrals, all right? Teaching is communication and education, all right? We gotta teach them how to give us referrals. When we coach, we actually talk about, I love it, uh, someone just wrote, educating your customers before we just put this up there. You're absolutely right, just asking for the referral. Get them used that they're gonna ask. You're not gonna scare them away. I mean, don't shout out them, of course but ask them in a nice manner. And then get into what we call is with them. For those of you who have been to some of my workshops and from some of my clients who are on here listening today, with them, what's in it for me? It's not just our teenage kids who are selfish. We're all human, we have a selfish quality to us. As we get adults, we, we, we hide it better, <laughs> right? So with them, what's in it for me? Why should I give you a referral? How's it benefit me? You know one of the ways some of my clients, it makes sense to say this? Please help us keep costs down by giving us referrals so that we don't have to spend on marketing. I know my marketing people on here don't like that, sorry. But when we get more referrals, then we have more money to invest in marketing, SEO, Google Ads, you name it, so we can then go hire, you know, bring in a marketing program as well, right? So with them, what's in it for them? Why should they give you a referral? How does it benefit them? Right? We need to let them know. We need to let them know what's available. What are the benefits? What to buy, right? How to choose and how to buy from you. Do all your clients, what's available? That's one of the most interesting ones to me. Do you believe all your clients know everything, every product and service they can buy from you? I'll share a quick story with you. One of my action coach uh, coaches, and I love to be about the action coach community because it helps my clients too, is I get to reach out to them. We support one another so we can continue to support you amazing business owners as we coach you. He had one of his clients who, his next door neighbors, they were pretty good friends and he was a carpenter and he built a, a wood fence for him around the yard. And that was in the fall and then the next spring his neighbor has another guy over there building his 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 deck out back and his client was obviously pretty upset about it why didn't he ask me and it was eating away at him where he told the coach he goes finally i just went over and knocked on the door i was pissed off he's like knocking he's like hey bob how how you doing i'm great hey you know you, do you like your fence and he's like yeah you know i love it I even referred someone to you to, to build their fence. He goes, well, if you love it so much, how come you've got some other guy to build your deck? What do you think the guy said to him? I didn't know uh, you built decks. There you go. <laughs> Ugh. How many thousands of dollars did Bob lose? Do your clients know what's available? Not just to purchase for themselves, but also to refer to you. Right? I know there's a few people on here that I do business with. I don't buy every product from you, but I know your products. 
because as a coach, I ask and I care about you and I want to be able to refer. So I know, so even if it's a product I'm not using or a service, I can refer someone when it makes sense, all right? These first six steps are a must with any referral strategy, right? We have to have that foundation of what's in here so we can then take more steps. You have to have a solid base to work from. Does that make sense, everyone? All right. So what I'd like to do real fast is just type into the chat. Take about 30 seconds. I want you to think we call BFOs. Remember, blind flashes of the obvious. Of the first six steps, what's one thing you wrote down that really resonated? What's the one thing you learned? And I'll yell them out, call them out to everyone to jog everyone's memory. What's one thing you learned in the first six steps that you're like, oh, reminder or something new? Just type yeah, away. Hey, Scott, it's Brian. For me, I think it was just, uh, you know, training your clients on how to refer to you. Absolutely. From there. Yeah, that's a great one. Another one, ask for referrals. Awesome, awesome. Educate more in why to refer. Yep, that's, that's it. training. Referrals are more effective. Cost marketing, absolutely. What else we got? Let's get a couple more there. And you want to shout it out, you can do it too. Yep, another one, yep. Make sure you're asking. They're more likely to follow recommendations. Awesome, good stuff, guys. I appreciate it. This is, this is as interactive as when we do it live and I get to walk up to you at the table and make you talk. <laughs> you guys are great. All right, let's get into step seven here. Give awesome service that creates delighted advocates instead of satisfied customers, right? You see at the top of the ladder there. Right? Advocates. Those are the ones who will refer when asked. We want to get them to raving fans. Create lifelong relationships with your customers rather than just getting one-off sales. Right? If they love you where they're willing to refer, that means they're going to buy often from you. Now, there might be a couple people on here where it's one product, they buy it, and that's it. I get there are some businesses like that. But how are you, again, back to communication, making sure they refer people to you? right? Satisfaction or delight. Sure, we want them to be satisfied, but when they, I love that picture, when they're so happy, they become, they get closer to raving fans, right? Satisfaction, but they talk about getting more than they expected. Imagine when someone's saying that, oh man, I was working with Chris, they were great. I had a problem called his team went above and beyond stayed on the phone past five o'clock with me helping me out so i could take care of my so i get payroll right and get checks off to my team right how are you going above and beyond that's what customers want good customer service is proactive right don't wait until there's a problem how are you training your team to see problems before the client does think about that and in coaching, when we work on our customer service system and process, that's a big part of it. We want to create, we help you through coaching, create a proactive. So when you're working with us, we're going to help you create that proactive customer service. That system and process. And you hear it all the time from me, system and process. For my clients who are on the phone, they're probably saying, yep, there goes Scott again. System and process, system and process. Yes, system and process, S&P. It's not salt and pepper. Want to be proactive, right? Your customer's interaction, right? Really matters, counts at that moment of truth when they really need help. So I want you to think for a second and write it down. I know we say list five moments of truth in your business. We don't have that many hours in this workshop to do that. That would be a full day event. But write one. What's one moment of truth in your business and customer interaction that you can think of? And whoever wants to, one or two people, if you want to shout one out or you want to type it in, go for it. Because remember, whatever it is in your business, it might be in someone else's too. And maybe they haven't thought about that. And this is how being part of the Action Coach community today, we help one another. So what's one moment of truth in customer interaction for your business? Yes, yeah, Scott, it's Ryan. As a financial advisor, it, it might be when the market crashes or when there's a significant life event. 
uh, a death of a loved one or something like that. Absolutely. Those are big moments, big moments in your business. All right. Thank you, Brian. In my coaching business, it can be something like that. We actually, when we coach you, we know your personal life gets in the box. Is it fair to say as business owners, our personal life gets in the way of business? <laughs> right? Those are moments of truth. Or I have a client call me because besides our weekly coaching, we are available obviously during the week and even on the weekend sometimes. If there's an emergency, oh my God, two of my team members called in sick. What do I do? We're going to get on the phone real fast and figure out what the solution is. But part of coaching when we start is to make sure. Now, in the beginning, we still might have that scenario where that can happen, but we want to build a business where we can protect against that scenario. So it's number eight, make sure to thank your customers. And what's the next part after you thank them? Hey, Brian, thanks. I really appreciate you coming in and giving me an opportunity to show you some strategies in your business that can help grow it. You know, by the way, I love working with people just like you, business owners just like you. Do you know of any other ones that could use our help as well that it would make sense for us to, you know, talk to? So I just complimented Brian that I love working with him and I want to work with people just like him. And do you think he probably hangs out with people just like him? And I think I'm skip, skipping ahead to one of our steps, but right? Simple scripting. Who here can say by show of hands that they script just about every interaction in their business, right? You might have a script on your cold call or your 30 second speech when you go to, uh, uh, when you go to a networking event. Have you given scripts to everyone in your office when they answer the phone? for every interaction. Everyone on your team is in sales. They might not know that, but they are. Everyone on your team is in sales. How are you giving them a script to not just say thank you, but ask to refer a friend, right? So if you don't take good care of your customers, then someone else most likely will. So people leave us why? 1% because of death. 3% move a house, 5% buy from a friend. Sometimes you know, these, these are things that, depending on our business, are hard for us to, to do anything about. 9% sold by a competitor. You know, that's more B2B probably. Product and price, okay? Anyone know what the last one is? It's 68%. Anyone know what? the 68% of the reason you lose a customer typically anyone want to shout something out perceived indifference they don't think you care now I know a few of you on this on this workshop today and I know as business owners in general you do care but how are you showing it how is your team showing it for those that have a team how is your team showing it Right? We have that winning customer service, right? Consistency, easy buying, great service, excellent follow up equals the wow factor. If you want a referral, and some people go, well, how's that part of a referral system? It absolutely is. If you're not wowing your customer, why will they refer to you? And that's the re education. What's, right? What is it that you have to do to wow them so that they are open to referring to you? right? What can you do to give that wow factor, right? How will you ensure this is happening for every A grade customer, right? I want you to take a note here. I want you to think of five ways to create the wow factor in your business. This is kind of what we call home fun instead of homework. You didn't think you come to a workshop and have homework, huh? <laughs> How are you? I want you, you need to create this list. What are the five ways? And by the way, sit down, talk about a little internal workshop to do with your team. Put up on the whiteboard, how can we, what are five ways we can wow our customers every day? Get their buy-in. And if you're not involved day to day as much on the, you know, in the front line, so to speak, talk to your team who are. What are the five ways to wow them and how can you support that? 
through training, through new ideas, right? Because it's the emotional bank account. We got deposits and withdrawals. We got to connect emotionally with our clients, also with our team members. It's both. Does that make sense, right? Okay. We're all emotional creatures. That's why it's with them. What's in it for me? All right. So step nine, just ask people when they buy from you or even the people who don't buy from you, right? They're buying on emotions. They'll be happy to refer if you ask the right questions. Who here typing yes if you do will ask someone who doesn't buy from you that says no from you at the end of that interaction, who here has asked them for a referral? Type in, if you have, type in yes. One, anyone else? Two. Two people. That's less than 20%. Think about that. If you've given the great service, even though they haven't become a client, why can't you ask for a referral? Right? Ask them. If you give good service, people who don't buy from you feel obligated to give you something. Ask them for that referral. Don't be afraid. What's the worst they say? No. They yell at you. Who cares? They weren't the right customer for you then anyways. All right. So all sales decisions, think about it. We're talking emotions. What percentage, you can shout it out or type it in, what percentage of a sales decision is based on logic? Out of, a, uh, out of 100%, split it. What percentage of that is logic? What do you think? 10%, 10, 10. Come on, a couple more, type them in. 40, yeah. 20%. I know my marketing people, if I gave them the mic to talk for a while, they would talk about how you create emotional marketing campaigns. We got to connect with their passions, their pains, right? We got to elicit an emotional response. Think about when you give your 30 second speech. So I did one today and this was an easy response because I was you know, at a, a workshop earlier today, uh, excuse me, a networking event. And it was my turn to do 30 seconds. I was like, hey guys, it's Scott with Action Coach here. Let me ask you a question. Who here would like more referrals in their business? You think all the hands went up? Do you think they all smiled? I connected emotionally. I go, great, I agree. By the way, we've got a complimentary workshop later today at three at 2.50, we're gonna kick off at three, log in at 2.50, and we're gonna talk about 21 steps to building a referral-based engine for your business. Go to my website, webelieveingrowth.com, click on the events page and log on so you can get in. I connected emotionally. When I don't have a workshop coming up, a lot of times what I'll say is, so many business owners do I have in the room? Great. How many work with business owners? Okay. How many f would like to actually have more date nights with their spouse? Never miss another Little League game. Always be at the dance recital. Do you know how many looks I get of, oh my God, in size? Great. Well, as Action Coach, what I do is I work with business owners to help them put more time back in their life while they grow their business so they never miss another, bit, another event with their family or date night again. Connect emotionally. How are you doing that in your business, right? We got to connect emotionally. Okay. Remember, people pay for perceived value and service above the perceived cost. If you connect emotionally, they're willing to pay more because they see more value. Therefore, they're also willing to what? Give a referral. This is great value. They're connecting, right? Right, the selling definition, and that's a referral. You're, you're, you're selling the referral to them it's for them to give it. Professionally help others to make up their minds. All right. You're a professional mind maker upper. That's what you are. That's what we all are. And that's what we got to do through referrals and the way we ask. And all the things we've talked about, the first nine steps, are helping them make up their minds to want to give us a referral. Step 10, 
That'll let our customers know you'll be asking for referrals later, by the way. When you enroll a new customer, let's talk service business first, are you letting them know, I'm gonna be asking for referrals later? Are you scripting that? If you're a restaurant, if you have a, if you own, you know, have a store, a retail store they come into, or retail store online, are you letting them know that you want referrals? Tell your friends to come on in. We're gonna have a sale on Monday. For anyone who brings in this little flyer, and you give them a flyer. You gotta let your customers know you're training. When we coach you, we talk a lot about how are you training your customers to interact with you. And a big part of that training is you're going to give us referrals. Who here is training their customers to give you referrals? Anyone? I mean, truly doing it. Yeah. Got to train them, right? Let them do your selling for you. How do we, we talked earlier on, what's the cost to acquire a client? This is how we reduce that cost significantly. If you have the proper referral system and you're doubling your business just through referrals, you're gonna be more selective in the marketing you invest in. And because you're doubling your business, doubling your revenue, and through coaching, making sure we're keeping more profit from that revenue, we're gonna have more money to invest in marketing besides the referral system so we can triple and quadruple our business. And then through our referral system, double it from there. So now we're eight times, 10 times the business. Think about that. If you don't have a million dollar business over the next two years with all the things we're talking about, if we just stopped here, we can get you to a seven figure business. And I don't mean just a million dollars. And those are at a million. How would you like to get to 10 million? It can happen. This is how we do it, right? Let them do the selling for you. So you've gotten halfway through, through the first 10 steps, right? means your business has to give awesome customer service. We need to know the first five, do we know who our customers are and how we can ask, tell people to ask us, teach them. Now we gotta give customer service awesome, that wow factor, woo hoo, I love a Raven fan, right? So that they want to give us a referral. Because when we get them to more raving fans, we don't, as Jennifer said the definition earlier, we don't have to ask for referrals. You're automatically doing it without us asking. Think about that, All right? So step 11, we got to make giving referrals a condition of doing business with you. Goes back to what we said. Are you training them to give you referrals, right? If you get one new customer from every customer you deal with, you'll regularly again double your size. How are you putting that in teaching that, okay? And then of course, are we rewarding our customers? This is the easiest, most obvious step, right? Work out how much you want to spend on every new customer. That's why we asked about that number earlier. There's a method to our madness, <laughs> right? And also your conversion rate. For every lead you get, how many come a client, a customer? If they're referrals, you should have a higher conversion rate. So we know that. Because then we're going to test and measure what we do. Think about this. I love this. So think about this. Let's do some numbers, a little math geeking out for a quick, quick 30, 60 seconds. A baker invests $300 a week, 30 customers. That costs $10 a customer. Each customer costs, each customer spent $450. After cost profits is $225, right? So profit per customer. Oh, wait. $225 minus the $10 to acquire that customer is a negative $725. So we need them to buy more than once to get profitable. Now they ran an ad though, this bakery, for a free 30 cent chocolate eclair. Cost them not much at all. They got 229 new customers. By the way, this is a real Action Coach customer. Uh, this is one of Brad Sugars, our founders, way back when. So the total cost is $300. 30 cents for 229 eclairs, plus the $300 of the, the investment in a weekly advertising. So it's $368.70. So the acquisition costs now, because we're able to split up that $300 over 229 customers, dropped to $1.61. 
Each customer spent more money because they got something free. So now we went from losing $7 on that first to making $3.25. Minus the $1.61, we made $1.64. How does that change the profitability in your business? Because in the end, it's not about getting big, meaning revenue, it's about getting rich, meaning profitability. And we can spend a lot of time on that, all right? So the old way, 30, 30 customers, we lost $217. With the new ad and profit, instead we made $375. Oops, sorry, I went too fast. Almost a $600 improvement in week one. So think about that in your business. Now, some businesses I know you can't give away the 30 cent eclair. I get that. But there's other things we can do to get them in the door to be buying. And we talk about that in coaching. All right? How many offer your customers a gift or a gift check or even free service for each referral? Make sure your gifts have a low hard dollar cost, but a high perceived value. Who would have perceived if you're going to your favorite bakery that that eclair only cost them 30 cents when normally they charge $3 for it, right? What's the perceived value you're giving them in this free thing or this $10 gift card? And by the way, no matter how much money your clients may have, everyone loves a $5 gift card, a $10 gift card, free Starbucks card. Everyone wants free stuff. How are you giving out free stuff? Right? Customers want satisfaction, but they talk about getting more than they expected. Right? So how can you do that? Right? How can you give the customer something more than they expected? Sometimes it's something free. Sometimes it's more you know, more customer service. And through coaching, we figure that out with you. So we know what we're giving. And then we help you implement that in your business with your team. So step 14, let your customers give their associates, family, and friends a gift from you. What's been great during COVID, we've heard a lot, you know, go support your local businesses, especially restaurants and places like that have closed down. Go buy gift cards now that you can give out so when they open up. But this is something that's always been around, we just haven't focused on. It. How are we giving customers the credit, right? When your customers get the credit for giving that gift, They'll want to sell for you. So is it a discount? Hey, for three referrals, you get $10 off. Or, you know, in coaching, you know, if for every referral, you get 10% off that next month of your coaching investment, right? What's the, what are you giving away to get, to incentivize them to give you a referral? Right? You can afford to give simply, you, you can afford to give simply, simple gifts both ways, right? And possibly double the effects of your strategy. So you need to test the gifts that works. We talked earlier, test and measure. It's also testing the gifts. What gives you a bigger list? So think about that in fifth, uh, step 15. Are you coming up with a few ideas and testing them? And the one that works is the one we go with, right? Some of them might not work so well. So we need to stop and do something else. Okay, so think about it. When you give gifts, how much can you afford to invest? This is an investment. This is still, mar this is marketing. This is an investment in marketing, right? Then also think about how many new prospects can you deal with at one time? Who here in the next 90 days can handle double the customers they have now? Anyone? Yeah, a couple, I'm oh, not sure, maybe uh, get kind of a half a hand. It's great to know how to double your customers through this through the proper referral system, but can you handle it? And so in coaching, one of the first things we do when we're working with you in coaching is see how you can handle it. Because there's a lot of ways we can turn on, like say the spigot, turn on that spigot, let that fire hose go, that fire hose of new leads and customers. But if you can't handle it, all it's gonna do is blow you back. We wanna make sure you can handle it before we turn that spigot on or we're gonna turn on maybe a little slowly until we can handle more. That's a big part of coaching, making sure we can handle doubling our customers first without you killing yourself, without you working more hours. We actually, the great thing about our the Action Coach system is we can double your business and have you work less at the same time. Does that sound good? 16. 
Are we mailing out referral cards with your orders? Think about some of you I know are on, do some online selling or someone's walk, walking in. Make sure a card goes out to every customer on every sale just in case they have someone new to refer to you. All right, on every sale. Right? Every invoice you send to a customer, by the way, if, it's, if they're on an invoice system where they get an invoice from you every month and it automatically pays, hopefully, you should do that. We'll coach you on that if you're not. On that invoice, is it asking for a referral? You know they're reading the invoice. Are you asking for a referral? How are you giving a card? My um, one, of, one of my clients who's in the trades business and goes to re residents, at the end of every in her, every time they go to a house, they have a little kind of rectangular flyer they give to them. Talks about a new service. If we have a new service we can offer, ask them to go online and give a review. Here's the link. And ask for a referral. All right? I know some of you on here, you, you give out magnets to put on the refrigerator. Don't just put your number on there. Ask for a referral. Give something out so they have it. And I know you're like, that's the simplest thing, Scott. Really? Yeah. Keep it simple, stupid, right? Isn't that what it is in life? It works. So make sure you have a referral card. It's a call to action. Be specific. Again, make it easy. It can't be difficult to give you a referral. And a coupon. A coupon of sorts, if you want to use that old terminology. Okay? Step 17, put a sign or sticker on all of your products. Again, really? Yeah. Sometimes it's just that easy. Your potential customers are looking for you everywhere. Be sure they can see you. All right? You got to make sure they can see you and give them a reason to call you. All right? Have a, have a, a, a cute logo, whatever it is and all that. With your number, we can help you. Your tagline, whatever it may be. We want attention to get them interested, to build desire, to take action, all right? All your marketing pieces have to do these four things, attention, interest, desire, and action. By the way, your 30-second elevator pitch at the next B&I meeting, does it grab attention? Ask a question. Who here wants more referrals? They're interested, it got attention. Would you like to know how to get more referrals every day in your business? Awesome. Action, the call to action. Go to our website, sign up for our workshop today at 2.50 p.m. We're gonna talk about 21 steps to building your referral engine that you can depend on every day. All right, so what's that in your 30 second speech? Number 18, present a seminar. Get invited. Now, for some businesses this might not make sense, but for a lot it does. Are you an expert? Is there something that someone would love to hear five minutes of you from? Or be like me and do a full workshop, <laughs> right? You get to teach, you get to be that expert. You get to make an offer of how they can do something for you. Give them a deal, is it a free coaching session? Which yes, we're gonna talk about that at the end, right? I want you to start thinking, do you wanna have a free coaching session so we can talk for 30 minutes about this? Or, do you want to get into a 90 minute strategy session? We're going to talk about both those, the offers we're going to make to reward your time today. How do you get invited or do you put on your own? Think about that, okay? Information is power, be the expert, right? People love to buy from experts that they, their trust level is much higher. Why do you think at the beginning, some a lot most people on here don't know have don't know much about me and you probably didn't check much of my website i get it so why do you think one of the first things i talked about was what's my background what gives me the right to talk to you about this scott's been 30 years of building companies scott's done over six billion dollars in revenue oh he might know a little bit how do you let people know you're the expert that they should talk to you that they should become your client that they should refer people to you that's what it's about okay Number 19, encourage your past and current customers to buy vouchers. We just talked about this a little bit, right? You can use the same gift voucher as an introductory offer. 
to turn them into lifetime customers. Think if your average customer pays, buys, spends, excuse me, sorry, spends about $100 when they purchase from you. And let's say when you add in your marketing costs, the cost to run your business, by the way, we know all this in coaching. We work with this, so we know the cost to, to have that customer. And let's say that first purchase, you make only, you make $10, it cost you $90 to sell that 100. But if they keep coming back every quarter and they buy four times a year, it costs us $90 to make 400. So if that's the case, does it make sense to give a voucher to give that whole, that first night purchase free maybe? Because now they're gonna buy three more times. So it just cost me $90, not the 100 I gave up, it only cost me what my costs are to get them to become a client. And now that's just for the first year. They typically stay five years. So I gave away a $90 cost of service for them to spend $2,000 with me over the next five years. Who here would do that trade every day? Right? Makes sense. It's okay to give a little bit away when it comes to referrals, which is different than discounting your prices for clients, by the way. There's very big difference between the two. In coaching, we'll talk about that. So how can they buy gift vouchers? Why do they want to buy it? What are the benefits? You need to teach them that. That goes back to the education, right? We're building our relationships. Relationships need communication, right? Do all your clients know that you sell a voucher? And some of you think in your business, I can't do a gift voucher. From what I know, because I asked you when you log registered to, to give a little information on your business, there's only about two of you on here who can't give out a, a true voucher, but there's other types of vouchers we can give out. How about a, a referral partner, you give out their voucher for someone to do business with you? It doesn't have to be your voucher, just think about that. All right? Number 20, how are we introducing ourselves to a new market, right? Remember the script I did earlier, hey, I would love to meet more business owners like you. You want them to bring your friend, their friends, to the, to, right? Bring a friend to the shop, to the restaurant. Bring a friend to a workshop. I have some of my strategic partners on here who I said, hey, come on out, you'll learn. Also, by the way, bring some of your customers. Use this as a voucher to bring a benefit to your client base. Think about that. Do you think some of your clients could benefit from what you're learning today? And then if they benefit, that means you benefit because they do more business. Or for someone, who, in an, someone who's an investment professional, a banker, a CPA, right? There you get to do more business, which means you benefit. That's the whiff them, all right? They'll introduce you to the new market. Where are most of your customers now, right? Where will you find them? just like them. How often do you ask your customers where they hang out? One of the things I ask when I do, when I meet up for coffee or even with my clients, hey, what, mark, what networking event are you going to? I want for a couple reasons. One, I want to meet more like-minded business owners like them. Two, I want to get the word out of my business. So if you're working with business owners, are you asking them where they're hanging out, where their friends hang out, right? Now, again, if you've written your target customer, your avatar, as we talked about, then you're also going to kind of know where they hang out. How about throwing a party? Throw a party to celebrate your customer's purchase. All new customers we, we do, I know in the world of COVID, it's a little harder to do that, but we can do an online party and talk. One of my clients today, we talked about doing a relaunch party, right? We're going to relaunch and get everyone on a Zoom and have a party on the Zoom. Invite a friend. Do you think it's just going to be their clients or they're going to tell them to invite a friend? And we're going to make it worth their while. How can you do that? This is one of the many things in coaching. We'll sit together and figure out how we can do that. Okay? Your customers usually have a group of friends. We know that who are at the same stage in life as they are. 
So if you have your target customers that you love, then of course they have others. Okay. So getting referrals is what? It's about consistency, easy to buy, the wow effect. So think about that in your business. Consistency, and this isn't just in referrals, by the way, this is in everything you do in your business. Easy to buy and the wow effect. The third thing I'm gonna tell you, because you should be writing all this down, of course, I hope. But the third thing, write this down and figure out in every aspect of your business, are you consistent in what that, that department's doing and how you go about your tasks? Is it easy to buy from you? Is there a wow effect? Why don't you think about that? All right. Getting through these steps is all about the little things you do. That's what it's all about, right? Getting better referrals is about creating what? The raving fans up here. That's the 21 steps. That sound good? But wait, it's the bonus round. We were really just talking about how do we get referrals from your current client base and people who look to shop from you but maybe not buy from you, All right? How about strategic partners, All right? What are the keys to strategic partners? I'm gonna go through this real fast because this could be a whole workshop on its own. But when we're coaching you and working with you, we're gonna work a lot on strategic partners, right? Who is your target strategic partner? Just like who's your target client? What strategic partner has the same target client, meaning the makeup? Doesn't mean they're selling the same product, right? What do you bring to the table for them, for their clients? Think the with them. Why should they trust you? How can you help grow their business? How does referring to you? So when I talk to a banker, why should they refer to me? because I'm gonna help their clients grow their business, which means more deposits into their bank, which means they're not part of that 80% that go out of business in the first five years. So how can you help them grow their business by their clients doing business with you? Does their customer base fit, fit their, your target market? And have you trained them? We talked about your clients. Have you trained your strategic partners how to give a referral? So real quick here, don't rush it, by the way, build a relationship. If you met someone at a networking event and you said, hey, let's have a virtual Zoom or go meet for a coffee when we are allowed to do that again, just get to know them. Don't go there and say, Chris, I want a referral now, give it to me. I haven't built a relationship with you yet. Because the most valuable thing I have is my client base. And I'm only gonna give referrals of my client base to people I know, like, and trust. So you gotta build that relationship. You have to have a sales process. What's your process? Is it three coffees and a lunch? What is it? Right, set up a meeting. Who should they refer? Why should they refer? How can they refer to you? Again, make it easy. You know, one thing I didn't put on here, which I should. Ask them how you can refer to them, by the way. Right? Don't be one way. That meeting needs to be all about them. So that in the end, they do want to refer to you. But you need to make sure you can, if you possible, can you refer to them? How can you help them? Set goals and KPIs. I know a lot of people shake their head when I say that. You do it in your business, I hope. It's a big thing that we coach on when we work together but set goals and KPIs with your strategic partners. Otherwise, you're just meeting for coffee and wasting each other's time. Like I said, buy them lunch and thank them. Every time they give a referral, whether they became a client or not, thank them and over deliver. And by the way, communicate. Communicate with them to let them know, hey, I spoke to Brian, he was great. We're actually, we got a meeting coming up. Thank you so much. Let them know a little bit, all right? Update them. And if possible, refer back, all right? So to finish up, a 
I want you to look down. I want you to take a minute. And if you want to shout out, we asked earlier, what's that BFO? What's something you learned? You're like, wow, that really stuck out for me today. If you want to type it in the box or if you want to shout out, either one is good. Let's share some of our BFOs. All right. And if you want to take yourself off mute, why don't we just actually just shout them out? What's one thing that you you learned that you look down at your notes, you're saying, wow, this is this is something I'm going to go try to do. I'll share it that I was surprised when you mentioned very few people ask for a referral, even when someone says that it's not the right time to work with you directly. I, I found that so surprising because even in prospecting, we even asked someone who doesn't want to get on the phone with our own client if they might know the next best person who would. So it was really surprising that that's such a simple question to ask and that most people aren't. Yeah. Thank you, Jennifer. Awesome. Thank you. Anyone else? Let's get one or two more. Yeah, I think for me, Scott, uh, it's Brian. I, uh, you, know, you talked about co connecting emotionally. I'd heard that before, that maybe 20% uh, logic and 80% emotion. Um, but, I, you know, I've got an accounting finance kind of a background, which is a logic kind of background. And so uh, I tend to connect with people logically. But if by, people are selling on emotion, uh, um, then, then there's an opportunity there for me. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? Chris, you took off mute. You want to go? Yeah, I, I think uh, referrals is also a form of building relationship. It's more on client retention strategy. The, the more that you deliver the service, it's like a validation that you're doing a great job, that you met the expectation. So it's also like a part of a continuous uh, performance evaluation to your existing clients. And like what I've said, it is much more cost effective rather than you know, trying to get and get more new leads where there's no value for that rather than keeping your existing clients satisfied. Absolutely. Good one. That's a great one. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you for sharing. I want to finish us off here. Warren Buffett, we know who he is, the Oracle of Omaha. It's not necessary to do extraordinary things to get extraordinary results. Why do sometimes we don't implement the knowledge we just learned? Because we think we got to be perfect at it. No, we don't. We just got to be good at it. All right? Let's be good to start. We can work towards great. Jim Rohn, never wish your life was easier. Wish you were better. If you really want to do something, you'll find a way. If you don't, you'll find an excuse. Brad Shager is our founder. I love this. Where you'll be in five years will depend on the books you read. And that's all about learning. And again, congratulations for being here today. This is, this is part of the books you read. The people you associate with and the actions you take. So what actions are you going to take after today? Right? We got two directions we can go. I'm going to try and improve myself, be my own, my own business. That's all, all good. As long as you're doing something, that's what we care about. You want to be your DIYer? There's nothing wrong with that. Or number two, I'm interested in getting massive results. So what's next? And obviously by working in coaching, we can help you implement not just this referral strategy to double your business, but also build a business that can handle double the business, a business that has consistent growth, and a business that you can work less in, right? More cash flow, more profit. Right? What's our exit strategy? Let's work towards that. So the question is, though, how much is it costing you to stay where you are and not do what needs to be done? So let's put your plan into action. So for business owners committed to growing their business and doubling your customers and profits, one-on-one -on -one coaching, that's face-to-face. -face. And obviously nowadays it's a lot of Zoom. <laughs> um, right? And it's for businesses with high potential growth. You've got to be willing to spend four to five hours working on your business every week, right? And it's easy, affordable. We've got programs, small group that start about 1250. And based on the size of your business, it can go up to about 5,100. It really depends on the size of your business. And we guarantee our results, by the way. And what we also want to see is your business coachable. Can we get you a three times return on your investment in coaching in year one and a seven times in year two? And we average about 9x over the two years. So we help you grow that business, right? Also includes membership and growth club. That's our every quarter we get together with all our action coach clients in the greater Austin area. 
uh, and around the country based on myself and two other the Action Coach franchise partners. And we do our 90 day plans. And like I said, we guarantee results. If you're not sure yet, I still want you to get into action. So I want you to do one of two things. I want you to pick either we'll do a 30 minute coaching session or we're gonna do a 90 minute business strategy session. So I'm gonna give you a few rules on the strategy session, but you can obviously go to our website, webelieveingrowth.com to the coach's calendar and book one of those right now. You can type in the box 30, 30 or 90. That's all you gotta do. And while you think about that, let me talk to you about what the 90 minute strategy session is. It's to create a customized game plan to implement what was just taught at this workshop along with some other things. Create solutions for your top two challenges and opportunities. A couple pre-qualifiers is a business must have a solid growth potential. You must be committed to changing how you run your business and you must be the business owner as well. And if you have partners, they need to be part of this session. And then there's three rules as I said. Rule number one, you gotta type into the box now 90 so we can get you on the calendar or go to our, our webelieveingrowth.com website and book it on the coach's calendar in the next today, tonight, before you go to bed. We're then gonna send you what we call our business basics, business, that's our business background questionnaire. It should take you less than 15 minutes to fill out. It allows my team to get to work for you. We're gonna start doing research on your company. You look at your website, your industry, maybe even do a secret shopper where possible so that we can come to the table with some ideas to, to help you implement and grow your business. But you gotta get that questionnaire back to me within 24 hours to hold your spot so our team can get to work for you. Does that sound fair? And then number three, simple one. At the end of the session, we're gonna ask you to make a decision. You can't say, I'll think about it. You gotta make a decision. One, I'm a DIYer, I'm gonna do it myself, and that's fine. Or number two, show me what coaching program makes sense, what kind of investment makes sense for me. Those are the three rules, all right? So you can type into the chat, like I said, 30 or 90. I know we've got a couple typed in already. Or you can go to the We Believe in Growth website afterwards and let us help you, all right? No matter how tough you think you are, you can't do this on your own. If you're a golfer, you understand, you know Tiger Woods has lots of coaches. All right, so I want to thank you all and congratulate you for being here and giving me the opportunity to work with you here today. I'm going to stay on. I know we're going to 4.30. We've got two minutes left. I can, I'm going to stay a little later. If anyone wants to stay on, we can have a, a group dialogue, a group discussion. <clears throat> um, yeah. <clears throat> but, yeah. I have, a, I have a question. Go for it. That's, uh, okay, so I know we... Uh, referral system would be effective. Would it be much more effective if they will get something like monetary value? Well, some of the things we talked about, yeah, it, they, it depends. It depends on your business is the, is the answer. Um, you know, some businesses you can't give a $25 gift card. Uh, other businesses you can, you know, there's going to be some regulatory issues. Uh, maybe it's, they, they, you can give, you know, they, like I said, there's a lot of things we can go over and see what makes sense. Is it a free croissant? Is it, you know, a free coaching session for me? Is it, you know, what it, it is that has a value to it and let them know what that value is, even though it's free, or is it again, is it a 10% discount on their next purchase, their next month's investment in the service? Uh, it depends on the business, but their perception is they're getting money but it doesn't actually have to be money you truly put in their pocket. Mm. Because our referral system is different. <clears throat> it could be B2C or B2B. So there are different type of referral system, right? Yep. So, well, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for the participation. Thanks for being here. Anyone else, I'm gonna hang on. If you gotta go, I know a couple people are logging off. That's all good, we're at our time, but I'm gonna hang out for a little bit. I always make sure I got some extra time in case there's some burning questions that you guys want. Otherwise, I know a couple people already typed in 30 or 90. So do that, I've already seen an email come in. Someone went to the website and, and logged on and, and booked their session. So please do it.